So that was a demonstration of the power clean. This is a very, very important exercise to learn in so many different athletic programs. Um, it's going to be one of the most difficult, uh, complex movements that you have to learn. So what we're going to do here is we're going to break that uh, exercise down. We're going to deconstruct it and put it in about nine or ten separate exercises. And if you're a beginner, I think it's going to be really helpful for you to get an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with the lift and what it should look like positionally. And if you already know what you're doing, I think you can still benefit a lot from uh, some of the separate drills because it's never a bad idea to brush up on a couple aspects of the lift that you might, you know, be having a problem with. So, um, as you'll notice, I'm very, very heavily influenced by two, uh, two coaches that I've worked under. One of them is Brian Derwin, the other is Istvan Yavorik. My teaching progression is very much derivative of what these guys have taught me, and so you're going to be hearing those two names quite a bit. So we're going to teach you how to do this lift from the top down, okay? So the first thing I want you to learn is how to hold the bar properly over here, like which is going to be what you need to do when you receive the bar when you're doing a power clean. Now, this is what I want you to take notice of. I want you to learn how to support this weight on your skeletal unit, bone on bone. We don't want to have the weight be on your wrists like that. We don't want to have like space like that. From here, I can even let go. So that's where we want the bar, okay? Side view. And that's what we're talking about. Now, there's a lot of misconception that it's really important to have really super high elbows, okay? There are people that have really high elbows that have a nice catch position. There are people that don't have high elbows that have a nice catch position. Don't worry about that as much as supporting it on your skeletal unit, okay? We want to create a nice platform up here for the bar to rest. So if you're doing the tough guy in the bar thing, you're sticking your chest out, pulling your shoulders back, I'm doing sort of the opposite. I'm pulling my shoulders forward and creating that nice platform for the bar to sit on top of. And so we have a, what I think is a really great example of this. So I told you about Brian Derwin. Here's a picture of the master doing a 207 kilo clean and jerk. So again, are his elbows high, high, high? No, they're not. Is that a good position? You bet it is. That bar's not going anywhere. He's getting up with that and he's going to jerk it overhead. Anti-American record. So that's a really good position for the bar to be in even though we don't have high, high elbows. Okay. So again, don't worry about your elbows, just worry about supporting it on that nice platform. Alright, so we're learning how to hold the bar up front, supporting it on our skeletal unit, on the platform, not having the brunt of it be on our wrists, all that kind of stuff. So this is an exercise that helped me out tremendously with this aspect, okay? I did it for a different reason. I was doing it to learn how to have a nice platform to then have, you know, for the jerk phase of the clean and jerk, but this is what we did. Just lockouts. That's all we did. Now I'm going to be pretty light here. This isn't the best setup for it, but this is the whole lift. Just, just the lockout. Just learning how to hold it here. And again, I'm not. I'm supporting it right here on that platform. All right, there are going to be two kinds of people that are going to have a real rough time trying to get this position down, okay? If you have very poor wrist flexibility, that's going to be a disadvantage. If you have proportionally long forearms, that's going to be a really bad disadvantage as well. Now, if you can't have that really nice position, does it mean you can't power clean? No, you can. You can certainly power clean because you're still going to get the benefit of the triple extension, the full body explosion. All that stuff is going to be really, really good for football, for hockey. You're just never going to probably be the most comfortable person, person holding it here. So in that case, you're going to have to sort of develop your own sort of individual unorthodox kind of style that just gets the job done. Football players, hockey players, all that, as long as you're accelerating the bar up, you're going to get a lot out of this exercise. And so don't worry about it if you're one of those people that are going to have a hard time with that position. Now, Having said that, most of the, it's a very, very unnatural position. So, so many people think they can't do it, they struggle with it, but they work at it and then they are able to achieve it. So, don't just write yourself off if you can't do it and it's not comfortable the first time. It's going to take a little bit of practice and, and all that kind of stuff. So, some people will never be able to do it, but that's okay. If you are someone that has the segmentation and flexibility, then we're going to have you work on this until it feels pretty comfortable and you're okay with doing it. 
So meet me back here for the next phase for part two once you have that down pretty good.